instead of focusing on your weight, just focus on being healthy. Yeah. Because like you said, like, it's normal to gain weight. You should be gaining some weight. While I'm pregnant, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing to see here, just sweaty armpits. Hey, what's up guys? It's Shandice from Gigglezilla.com and this is my husband Scott. And as you know, we had a sweet little baby <laughs> on the way and we want to talk about 10 things we wish we knew before we got pregnant. The number one thing I wish I knew before we got pregnant was that getting pregnant is not that easy, right? Like it's it can be a challenge to conceive and I feel like my sixth grade sex ed class failed me a little bit because I didn't know, like if you're watching this, you're way smarter than I am. I did not know that you could only get pregnant when you were ovulating. And then there's a short like 24 or 12 to 24 hour time period when your egg drops down and needs to be fertilized. I had no idea, right? I just thought, brown chicken, brown wow, right? And then boom, you're pregnant. But that wasn't really, the case for us, yeah, right? Yeah, it seems like that, that health class that failed you really should have been a math class. Yeah. <laughs> because there's so many factors. There like are. Your ovulation time, and then how long the sperm stays alive. Yeah. And then the optimal 12 to 24 hours. It's, yeah. it's a formula. It's a complicated math problem, and it took us a few months and a lot of reading to actually figure out like, oh, okay that's how a baby is made and like i'm not 15 like i'm 30 almost 34. i should have known this but we didn't know that was a surprise to us and even women that figure that out or people that figure that out they still have a hard time conceiving so it was an aha moment for us that doing the do does not automatically equal baby like there's a lot more to it would you agree yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah and are you gonna talk about the kit the, oh go ahead yeah it really wasn't until we got one of those ovulation tracker kits yes so really pinpointed when you are on your prime time ovulation yep. Yep. point yep. so we could figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> this is not a PG-13 conversation. <laughs> yeah, so we ordered an ovulation kit because from what we thought, like, oh, just go do what it takes to make a baby and then you'll get pregnant. Easy peasy, right? But like Scott was saying, there's more math and more science and biology and physiology, like things going on that require you to know when your peak window is. So we bought an ovulation kit, like an ovulation predictor, and that pretty much worked for us the second mm -hmm. time we try it. Yeah. We are very blessed that we conceived on our second try. And I know there's a lot of women that have been trying um, for years and years. And um, so we feel blessed that the ovulation kit worked for us, but there are lots of other ways to have a family. And if the ovulation kit didn't work for us, we were gonna start talking about what other ways we could because we just really wanted a kid. So yeah. That was our number one thing. The second thing I wish I knew before we got pregnant was that morning sickness, and I'm gonna do air quotes because morning sickness does not only happen in the morning. And unlike the movies, it doesn't happen the second you find out that you're pregnant. Like you don't instantly start vomiting. I was six weeks into my pregnancy before my morning sickness started. And we were really confused because I thought, oh, I'm gonna be one of those really lucky women that just doesn't have morning sickness. I'm six weeks pregnant and I haven't thrown up yet, right? It only happened after lunch and then late in the evening at dinner. Like sometimes we'd be sitting down eating and I have to get up from the table and I would just go lay on the floor because I felt so nauseous. It's almost like you're on a roller coaster for too long. You get off the roller coaster and you're trying to walk around and you just feel woozy or it's um like car sickness. It's not even like vomiting all the time. It's just this uneasy, like unsettled, car sick, motion sick feeling that I had from week six until probably the beginning of our second trimester. Yeah, once it kicked in, it was just like, 
consistent. Once, yes, once it kicked in, it also kicked my butt, okay? We uh, went to the doctor and she prescribed, our midwife prescribed B12 for me, which was a lifesaver. It mm -hmm. did not take it away completely, but then I could function like, yeah, it made a I, big difference. It made a huge difference. I was so nauseous. Like, I just couldn't even function. I couldn't think. I couldn't make dinner. Like, I couldn't even walk. Like, I just felt terrible. I would just go lay down in the bed for hours. Um, and then I actually lost weight. I know most women gain weight. My first trimester, I lost weight because I just wasn't eating. And when I did eat, I felt sick. So then I didn't want to eat, right? So it's really unhealthy for me. It's really unhealthy for baby. Talk to your midwife. Talk to your provider. If your morning sickness is terrible, hopefully you guys can figure something out that works for you. And I think the most surprising thing about it to me was just how debilitating it really oh was. Oh my gosh. You were, you were in. <laughs> and I ain't no weak link. Either. No, you aren't. You're, you're <laughs> tough. And it, it really kind of took you out for the count. It did. And in a, it was surprising to me that that essentially made your first trimester the hardest one. It was. Of all three. I it mean, was. You were well into your third trimester now. And I'd say third trimester is the second hardest one yeah. so far. Since we're talking about our first trimester, we were so surprised to find out that I had a fibroid attached to my uterus. I had never even heard of a fibroid. So we were at the hospital because I was having extreme abdominal, abdominal pain and we did not know why. We just thought, oh, we're pregnant. We think we're pretty sure we're pregnant. We took a home pregnancy test. This must be what it's like to be mm -hmm. pregnant, you know, just really bad abdominal pain. And it got so bad that I called the nurse and she said, you need to go to the hospital just to make sure everything's okay with your baby. And so we went to the hospital and again, we had not had a blood test yet. We didn't know for sure that we were pregnant. We had just done a home pregnancy test and thought we were pregnant. And so we went in, we like, we think we're like three weeks or four weeks mm -hmm. pregnant. My stomach hurts really bad and we don't have any tests that confirm that we're pregnant other than the one from home. And they did the test and they're like, oh, you're pregnant. So we were like, oh yeah. And they're like, and you're six weeks pregnant. We're like, wait, what? You know, like yeah, back to the funny math about yeah, pregnancy. Yes. Like, hold on, like yeah. six weeks. I don't I don't know about that. I don't know how I'm six weeks pregnant. It's some weird math problem yeah. they have figured out where they add two weeks to your last period again. Anyway, we won't even talk about that. So we were like, okay, yay, it's finally confirmed. We are actually pregnant. And then the next thing they said was what? You have a fibroid. You have a fibroid. And Scott's response was like, what the heck What's is a, a fibroid? fibroid? <laughs> is it cancerous? Like those questions like immediately started popping up in our minds. Like, so is she eating too much fiber? Or I what? know. <laughs> Does it come from too much fiber? <laughs> We're in the hospital and Scott just starts Googling, mm -hmm. what's a fibroid? Is it cancerous? Is it gonna impact baby? Which and you shouldn't do, don't don't Google. Yeah, don't just, Google fibroids. Just we don't. just spiraled Spiral. and spiraled and panicked and just like, you don't need to panic, right? Like there are ways to take care of it. Um, and your doctor or your midwife or whoever you're seeing is gonna help you navigate those conversations mm -hmm. if you turn out to have a fibroid. So that was a big surprise to us never heard of a fibroid, didn't even know existed inside my body. Apparently it's been there forever, pretty much since, you know, you start your period or whatever, because it's fed by estrogen. We left the hospital excited that we were pregnant and terrified that this fibroid might somehow impact our baby. I don't know that there's a way to find out that you have a fibroid unless you do an ultrasound. Yeah. So if you are trying to conceive and you're like, well, do I have a fibroid? I don't know how you're gonna find out. We have since learned a lot about mm -hmm. fibroids. Most of them are non-cancerous. Thankfully, ours is on the outside of the uterus and it's high up on my right side. So it's not gonna impact baby's growth. Um, he's actually at the 92nd percentile, so he ain't worried about that fibroid. <laughs> He is like growing just fine. After the first trimester, it stopped hurting. Eventually they can break down and deteriorate. And I think that's what mine has started to do. They do the most growing in the first trimester usually. So mine grew from four centimeters to seven centimeters and it really hasn't grown since. Um, so we panicked and panicked and stressed out and God took care of us and the the fibroid is still there. It may not ever go away, but we were able to conceive and we're just thankful for that. 
So the next thing I wish I knew, and this is not PG-13, vaginal discharge, like your lady parts will become leaky faucets. And I'm just gonna leave it at that, okay? Nobody told me that that happens. And when it started happening, I thought it was like a weird fluke. So I talked to my midwife about it and she goes, oh honey, yeah, that's gonna happen a lot. And it's even gonna happen after the baby's here. And I was like, wait a minute. So you mean to tell me this is my new life? Like just leaking all the time? But it slows down apparently after baby is born, but I've just had to start, you know, taking precautions and started buying liners to put in my underwear. And it's not a lot. If it is a lot, you should talk to your doctor, but she said a little bit consistently is pretty normal. I didn't know about it, okay? And I don't know who would have told me because it's probably uncomfortable to tell people this is gonna happen to you. Awkward. But I'm telling you, because almost every woman I've talked to about it since, it's like, oh yeah, that definitely happens. Discharge is real, okay. The next thing I wish I had known was that baby kicks don't feel like kicks. They feel more like a flutter. At least at first, right? At least at first. Yeah. So I assumed a baby kick would be definitive. I'd be like, oh, he's in there kicking. Not at all. I was very confused the first time. I was like, what is that? It almost feels like a muscle spasm when your muscle kind of goes like that. I didn't know what it was. And then it kept happening and I thought, okay, I think he's kicking. And so then I was like, Scott, I think the baby has started kicking and now, pfft, let me tell you, little Bruce Lee in there, okay? Just kicking and <laughs> punching and moving and like, sometimes I'll just be walking and be like, ooh, okay. All right, there he is, there he is. Hi, hi, I, I, I know you're does, in there. He does like stretches, he's just like. Oh yeah. <laughs> pretty sure. <laughs> he just stretches his body all the way out. Total disregard for how I might feel when he do that. But anyway, baby kicks are not definitive at first, at least not for me. The next thing that surprised me was the heartburn. Maybe you knew you were gonna have heartburn when you got pregnant. Um, I did not know it was this bad. Like, what did you call it? With Dante's? Yeah, it's like the bottom level of Dante's Inferno. It is like the bottom level of Dante's Inferno. It feels like someone lit a torch and threw it into my mouth. And it's not always when I eat spicy food or when I um, am laying down. Sometimes I'll just be walking around and boom, my throat is on fire. I have tried Tums, it works a little bit. Almond milk works really good for me. Um, blanched almonds, um, and then just trying not to eat too late at night. Those are the only things that, that have helped me. Third trimester has been the absolute worst for heartburn. I am managing with it, but it is very challenging and I wish somebody would have told me it was gonna be this severe. I have heard, and I don't know if it's true, that if your baby, if you have really bad heartburn when you're pregnant, that means your baby's gonna have a lot of hair. We will see, after he's born, we'll do a video, we'll revisit this theory, and we'll see if he has a lot of hair. Hopefully we'll, he does. We'll prove it by anecdote. Yeah, <laughs> by one single anecdote. Yes. Proven. <laughs> So this next one's a little bit controversial and if it touches a nerve, I'm not sorry, cause it's how I feel. People and family will get on your nerves when they find out that you are pregnant. I equate it to planning a wedding, okay? When you're planning a wedding, you express to your friends and family the kind of wedding you want to have. They then express to you the kind of wedding they want you to have. It's the same when you have a baby. Well, don't you want to breastfeed? Well, don't you want to bottle feed? Well, they don't need tummy time. Well, they need lots of tummy time. The person giving the advice has a good intention. They really want to help. They want to make sure you are prepared, especially as first time parents. But what they don't see is that a hundred people are giving us advice. And guess what? A hundred percent of it conflicts with what the last person just yeah. told us. It's overwhelming, okay? We want the advice. It gets on my nerves only because I don't know how to decipher it. You say one thing, the next person says something, another person says something else. Like, if I have a question about something, let me come to you and ask, or heck, I'll freaking Google it. That's what I usually do. Sometimes that's not a good idea though. Yeah. What is more helpful to parents, and tell me if you agree, is to support 
the decisions they tell you they are going to make. And then if they are struggling with those decisions and you have advice or they ask you for your help or your opinion, then share what you think. Do not tell your horror stories about labor or about how your kids are terrible. That is un helpful don't say things like oh just wait until they're two and then you'll really be having a hard time it's unhelpful especially to new parents try your best to just support them i am here for you let me know what you need sometimes i just need to cry okay i don't need to hear your advice i just want you to sit next to me and let me cry would you agree yeah okay yeah i think the most annoying thing for me is just that kind of a oh well once you're a dad, then you'll know kind of a thing. Or yeah. Like once you're a parent, it's just this kind of like looking <laughs> down on you kind of thing. It's just like, like just be supportive. Like, I don't know, they're not, they're, they're just, they're trying to be friendly and just kind of like a, oops, sorry. It's okay. They're trying to be like a, oh, well, once, once, yeah. you're, once you're there, then you'll know. But it's just kind of subtly demeaning. Yeah. I think the other annoying thing is when someone kind of has some kind of parenting idea or philosophy that they're just like, boom. This yeah. Is, this is it. And it's like, okay, like that's. I can understand why that's a good strategy, but like that's specific to your kid and like yes. every kid is different. So that could be a good strategy, but not a hundred percent of the time. Yeah. And so it's just kind of this notion that it's almost like everyone thinks you need to do this. Yes. It's like, well, maybe we don't know what our kid's going to be like yet. Exactly. So we'll play that one by ear. Yeah. So. Yeah, and uh -huh. we will determine what is best for our child, yeah. right? Like your philosophy applied to our child annoys the crap out of me <laughs> because yeah. give me space to figure it out. Parents are going to make mistakes, especially new parents, right? Like I don't need to have it all figured out. I don't need to have mm -hmm. it all buttoned up. And if you feel like I do, and that's why you keep giving me advice, then you have misread me completely. Like I expect to make mistakes and to screw stuff up. I'm okay with that. I want to learn and grow and I want to figure out what works for us. But it is important, like you said at the beginning, Ms. Trimmer, they 99% of the time they're coming from a good place. Yes, and I so know that. You need to try just to be, much as we can, try to be gracious. Like, okay, thanks. Appreciate he, it. He can be the gracious one. But I, I, feel, like, <laughs> I, feel, like, I feel like so far you kind of get the brunt of it. Because I'm the one with the bump the in the front. Kind of obviously, doing most of the work right yeah. now. But once he's here, you know, you know that'll be different. So yeah, I you might, know, buffer these people. I might experience it more too. But. Yes. Yeah. People want to be helpful. I get that. Your helpfulness get on my nerves. I said it. I'm not sorry about it. Okay. Please. I'll ask you if I need help. You can still be gracious. I don't know how to be gracious. Just kidding. <laughs> I will be. I you have, you haven't, you haven't. I'm just I only, for, I only tell for the peoples. For the people. For the Y'all be gracious. Try to be gracious. Do as we say, not as we do. do <laughs> okay. This is number eight. We got a couple more. We're almost done. Your body changes. We know that your body will change. Obviously, your belly's gonna get bigger. Other things will get bigger as well, like your boobs. There's a couple things that surprise me, and I'm just gonna read from this list because I don't remember all of them. That's another thing. Your memory. It just goes, I don't know why, but it does. I can't remember nothing. I'll be in the middle of a sentence and then be like, what was I saying? It happens all the time. Before this, I had the best memory in the world. Yeah. Like I can remember every single detail by everything. Hopefully my memory come back. Still, if it don't, it's okay. The memory's still better than mine though. I know, right? He's been taking his ginkgo biloba. Mm, ginkgo bologna, yeah. Ginkgo bologna, that's what ginkgo he calls bologna. it. Ginkgo bologna, Okay, the biggest, not the biggest thing. Something that has changed, you will have blurred vision, which is strange. The hormone your body released, I think it's called progesterone. I don't know what it's called. You will have blurred vision, which is weird because I already have bad vision, so it's even worse right now. Restless leg syndrome happens in the third trimester. I don't know why. Charlie horses or like muscle spasms in my calf muscle at 3 a.m. where I can't move my leg, strange, okay? Weird dreams about the most random stuff. You're like, okay, this is weird. Uh, constipation, y'all, okay? Again, these hormones, like, constipation. <laughs> It's real, okay? <laughs> and the, the real estate has shifted a lot in your gut. The real estate is, I ain't got that much space left mm -hmm. and my intestines and stomach are like, what is going on? Mm -hmm. Your hair and nails are gonna grow real fast, okay? And it will be luscious and beautiful, but I heard it falls out after the baby comes, so enjoy it while you got it. Pee in every freaking five minutes. Like, sometimes I'll go pee and I'll stand up and then I'll be like, I gotta pee again, like right now. And then I'll just go pee again, anyway. Um, aching bones, 
when you get to your second trimester, you're supposed to start sleeping on your left side um, to help get baby in the right position. And because your organs are on your right side, sleep on your left side is supposed to help with heartburn, but that also means your hips are gonna start hurting and your shoulders are gonna start hurting, okay? Gas and burping, have to apologize to Scott all the time. I'd be like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so, he's like, it's okay. He's gracious. And then the tiredness, like so tired, like you fall asleep while somebody talking to you. It happened to me, okay? I was talking and next thing I know, I was like falling asleep and they were like. Who are you talking to? I can't tell you. Oh, I'll right, tell you right. afterwards, okay. okay? It's embarrassing, but you will be so exhausted. Your body's gonna do some weird stuff, but you will get through it, okay? The next subject is a little bit sensitive and it's weight gain. So I assumed that once you got pregnant, you should just eat whatever the heck you want and that you would just balloon. Like you would just turn into this <laughs> big old blimp, <laughs> right? And so I'm reading articles about the best way to control weight gain and like to have a belly only pregnancy it's called. So where really it's just your belly that's growing. I have since balanced myself out. Like I was kind of obsessing mm -hmm. at first about my weight because I didn't want to gain a lot of weight. And I actually read some really comforting articles that said, as you're gaining weight, it's actually a good thing. Like you need to put on weight. Um, you're going to gain weight anyway, as your baby gets a little bit bigger, but that doesn't mean you have to balloon, right? So far I've gained 30 pounds, which is within the normal range. I have about uh, four weeks left until baby's due date. And they say 25 to 30 pounds is average. Some women gain 70, some women gain 20. And the best thing to do is talk to your doctor about your weight if you're worried about it or if you're worried about baby. But really what has helped me is understanding that I can eat healthy still and I can exercise as much as I can. And Scott has been really supportive. He works out a lot and he'll just be like, hey, do you want to come work out with me? And I'll just go walk on the treadmill for 15 minutes, right? Or I will lift very light weights um, for about 15 or 20 minutes. And those little changes actually are really helpful. They have helped me keep my weight down. Um, and then I feel really good. It actually energizes mm -hmm. me a little bit. Sometimes I'll be tired and Scott will be like, well, just go for a walk. I'll come back from my walk like, I have so much energy and just be like ready to go. Um, so my point with this is that your weight gain can be controlled to some degree um, and that if you gain weight, like it's okay. As your husband, I feel like I tried to kind of shift the conversation and not be like, you know, it's not, instead of focusing on your weight, just focus on being healthy. Yeah. Because like you said, like it's normal to gain weight. You should be gaining some weight. While well, I'm pregnant, yeah. Yeah, and you know, I, it's, it's in your and the baby's best interest for your mind to not be worrying about your weight. That is a good point. Um, yeah. So I would, I would always just try to just kind of steer you away from. We even, we took the scale out of the bathroom. We did. So that you, would, <laughs> just so that you wouldn't even be looking at it. And it's been good for me too. I don't. You know, anyway. I was um, weighing myself too much. Yeah. I was yeah. like, oh, three pounds. Dang it. You know. Yeah, and like you, you need to keep your mind right. Your mind is your mind will lead to a healthier body, and so, you know, if you, if you're hungry, you know, you can go snack on things. Let's just try to find healthier snacks. Yeah. Something that still tastes good, but you know, not like bag of Doritos or uh, something or a bag of mm, ruffles, onions. Ah! Quit telling them my business. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, snack, eat but try to make healthy choices yes um go exercise because it's good for you not yeah. because you're trying to lose weight while right. pregnant it's, yeah. it's good for you you need to be have some level of exercise yeah. while pregnant yeah so, and even while not pregnant yeah so just focusing on i guess i kind of saw it as my role to try to help her focus to help you you're right here um to help you focus on health yeah Instead and of, not so much weight. weight. Yeah. yeah. And it's actually given me a lot of peace just to kind of lay off a little bit and to indulge sometimes. Um, and that's what my doula told me. She yeah. was like, you need to chill. Mm -hmm. Like you need to chill out about your food obsession. Indulge every now and then. Just like you were saying, don't eat a bag of Doritos every single day. But if you want something, 
eat it in moderation. Mm -hmm. And so I have tried to adopt that. It's harder as I get into my third trimester <laughs> to have moderation. Finding things to eat in moderation, keeping lots of fresh fruit and veggies around the house. Um, Scott will make some celery juice and he'll just mm -hmm. bring it to me and I'll drink it, you know. Um, so you can control your weight and it's not good to obsess about. It's not good for you and it's not good for baby. So number 10, the last thing that I wish I had known is that, I hope I don't get emotional, but I might. I wish I had known how much I would love this little guy, even though I have never met him. I have never seen him. I have never held him, right? Like I've seen him on the ultrasound, but my heart explodes when I think about him and every time he kicks and moves and hiccups, like I just stare at his ultrasound pictures and I'm like, how can I love someone this much that I have never met before? And that surprised me because I hear women talking about holding their baby in the hospital for the first time and bonding with them and having them skin to skin for that first hour. But I've never really heard someone talk about being in love with your baby while they are in your uterus still. And um, um, it's something I wish I would have known. Like you can experience this love and this bond with this baby even before you hold them. Mm -hmm. Like you love him so much. Mm -hmm. We were watching a movie and I have to tell this story. Sure. <laughs> We were watching a scary movie and I got scared and this was like a week and a half ago and I like jumped and kind of frightened. And yelled. And, okay, and I yelled a little bit. Scott gonna keep it real. A lot of it. <laughs> okay, I yelled, whatever. And immediately when I yelled, the baby started hiccuping. And I was like, oh no, I think I scared him. And Scott just comes to my stomach and he starts like talking to our little guy rubbing my belly. He was like, it's okay, it's okay. Like he did not want Nolan to be afraid. And mm -hmm. he just immediately started trying to comfort him in my womb. And it was really sweet to see because we both feel so bonded to this baby. And the little guy got four more weeks to cook. Mm -hmm. So. I just hope that this bond continues after he's here, um, but we just love him so much. One more bonus one. I wish someone had told me, and it's very empowering. Your body is so incredible. It is so strong, right? Like it is growing this life. It is going through all of these changes and it can birth this baby and it will birth this baby. That is so empowering to me. And I've heard people say women's bodies are incredible. They're really strong but to be experiencing it firsthand, like my body grew a foot, like what? My body grew a liver and some eyes and like a heart, like that's incredible, like that's amazing. And if you are pregnant and you're trying to conceive, like your body is absolutely incredible and it's absolutely so strong. Our birth instructor also said something the effect of, you don't have to tell your body how to make a baby, it just, starts making hand, hands, feet. Yeah, brain. which is like the creator knew what he was doing, yeah. right? Like when he created the woman's body and allowed that egg and that sperm to connect, I don't have to remind Nolan to grow his eye today. Like, okay, you really need your retina, so focus on that body. Oh, you really need toenails. It just like, it's amazing. For the yeah. most part, it just does it. You need to nourish your body and take care of mm. your body. So anyway. All that to say, your bodies are strong, they're powerful, and they are literally amazing. So let me hear your stories, leave a comment, and thanks for watching. And subscribe to my wife's channel. Oh yeah, <laughs> he's shameless plug. Subscribe to this channel, y'all. <laughs> Bye.